Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. Here's a game in which one team tries one strategy, it doesn't work for them, so they switch to another strategy and they get better results. It's a perfect example of when one thing is not working for you, switch up and do something different. Don't do the same thing over and over and over again if it's not getting you the results you're looking for. You'll learn some valuable lessons by watching this video. Before I press the start button, a big thanks to the YouTube channel Middle Georgia Pickleball for posting this video. Let's go. Before the game starts, take a look at the guy in the near court on the left. He's very tall. I would say he's probably 6'5 at least, maybe taller. The guy on the right, I think, is a seasoned veteran. I think the tall guy may be rather new to pickleball in the backcourt. You have some guys that uh, one guy is pretty big, looks like he could hit the ball pretty hard, and another player that looks similar to the player who is serving the ball, maybe a little bit younger. Here's the first serve. Nice third shot drop. Both players at the non-volley zone getting into a dinking match here, and the taller gentleman just makes an unforced error right into the net. Oh, he's going to try a lob right there. I bet he doesn't do that again. Again, at the non-volley zone, the guy in black makes the unforced error at that time. So what you can see is happening here is the players that are in the near court, they are trying to get their opponents into a dinking game at the net. Let's see if they can dink. And there's just a hit into the net. And let me show you what happens here. This is just a very, very shallow return. You really could not anticipate a shallow return like this because this is not the ideal way to return a ball. And basically what happens here is the taller player hit the return so poorly it worked out. It's like he missed so bad he got it because his opponent could not get up to the ball in time. He's kind of laughing about it, telling his partner, I really wasn't trying to do that. You've got to get your return of serves deeper into the court. Okay, so as you can see what they're doing, they're trying to get their opponents into a dinking game. And there's another unforced error um, by the guy in black. So the, the team in the near court looks to be better at dinking than their opponents are. Again, a third shot drop. He just missed it. No power game here. Just trying to get up to the non-volley zone. And again, to get into a dinking battle. Let's see here. Oh, he hits a little bit more of a drive there. Tries to reset it into the kitchen. Just cannot get to it because the team in the far court did a good job of hitting to his backhand. So let's see if the team in the far court is going to turn things up. And you can't turn things up if you cannot get your serve in. Just get your serve in. It's not that difficult. Okay, so he goes to the power game and what happens? He hits the ball about 10 or 15 feet out of the court. Just uh, again, though, that was a very shallow return. Nice third shot drop. Getting into a firefight here. Back to dinking. That was a very nice reset. And again, the guy in the black is having an issue with this dinking game. I don't think that is his strength. I think his strength is more of a power game. Let's see if they try to change that and get the team in the near court out of the dinking. In order to dink, you've got to get that third shot in. He just missed it. Nice job there. All right, so they are winning at the net. The other team has got to see that that is not working for them, and they've got to try to change things up here because at the net, I don't think they're going to win this game. Instead, he tries a power game, and he missed that shot by about 18 inches. 
not even close to getting it over the net. He probably needs to stick with his third shot drop. Now here comes the power, and there we go. No third shot drop there. Strictly switched to power, and he overpowered his opponent. Oh, tried a third shot drop. Shouldn't have done that. He is just not a touch soft player. He is a power player. That's a really good serve. Nice top spin. Okay, let me show you what just happened there after this point is over. Getting into a firefight and the team in the near court is just not going to win a firefight. But let me show you the mistake that the guy in the black shirt made. You have to know where your opponents are on the court at all times. So watch what happens here. There's a very good serve, deep serve with top spin. The player returning the ball. He's not even in the picture. He returns it, and he's nowhere near to being by the nine volley zone when his opponent hits the ball. The guy in black should have hit it to him while he was on the run, but he didn't. He hit it to his partner. That's just a huge mistake. He could have caught the other player in the transition zone and won that point outright, but he chose to hit it to the wrong player. Let's see if he notices this time. Let's see what happens. Nope, did it again. Hit it to the guy that was already established at the non-volley zone. Another firefight here. Nice reset. Nope, firefight. They're not. Come on, guys. Y'all are not going to win a firefight. That is not their game. Just is not going to happen. The other team is just too powerful. Now the team in the near court is playing into the hands of the team in the far court. Here comes the third shot. You want to bet this is going to be a drive? And look where his opponent is. Still not getting to the non-volley zone in time. Is he going to hit it to him as he's in transition? Yep, he does. Pops it straight up and boom. Shake and bake. Really, really poor play by the taller guy and not hustling and getting up to the non-volley zone. That time the player in black saw exactly what was happening and he caught the player in the transition zone and got him to pop it up. You've got to do better than that. See that time the guy in blue was established. He hustled up to the non-volley zone, unlike his partner. Okay, so this is playing into the hands of the team in the near court, but when it gets a little powerful, the other team is just too powerful. So let's see what happens this time. I mean, the tall guy can get to the non-volley zone probably in three or four steps. Let's see if he hustles up. Did a better job that time. Can he get it back? Nope, just popped it straight up. Again, really not quick enough. He was not set in that athletic position. And again, he can get to that non-volley zone quicker than any of these other three players. He just does not hustle up enough to get there. Here we go. Oh, that's a really nice third shot drive, fifth shot drive. And the ball is out of the court. I don't know about the guy in the light blue shirt in the near court, but I can tell you that when I hit my two-handed backhand, I can hit it harder than I can my forehand. This guy's two-handed backhand is really, really good. Another thing I noticed, he's playing with the same shoes that I play in, and that is a pair of Diodora. I want to point out something else, too. As you can see right here in the lower left-hand corner, he is playing with a black ace paddle. That is, I think, the most powerful paddle on the market. What's he going to do here? He's going with the third shot drive. Boom. Great third shot drive. Fifth shot. Seventh shot. Goodbye. Yeah, the power game is now turned on. They're saying, screw the dinking. The third shot drops. We're not doing that anymore. We're going to win this game with power. Let's see what he does. Boom. There it is. Nice defense. He did reset it. That was a great reset. So obviously the guy in black can reset the ball if he needs to. Really good uh, play there. Third shot drive. You just can't handle it. Just too much power. I mean, that's a big guy. And they keep returning it to him. There you go again. Good get. Nice reset. Here comes the... Oh, missed it that time. Good job by the guys in the backcourt. Let's see what the team in the backcourt does. Are they going to try to hit a third shot drop? No, they're going to go with the power game too. 
Easily handled by the guy in the black. Power game, you're not going to win it. Oh, he hit that into the net. Wow. Had it set right into his put-away zone, and he just hit it into the net. That ball's out of the court. So it looks like the tall guy definitely has a third shot drop game. Probably hits it almost exclusively. He has not hit a third shot drive yet. There you go again. Nice job. Let's see what happens here. Missed the dink. Good serve. Very shallow return. Missed another one. I mean, the guy in black should do everything he can to get the points over with his power because he's just not the greatest dinker. Look at these drives. Very nice. Another one. And that's out of the court. Good job by the guy in the backcourt to let that ball fly out. When the ball is at your eyes, let it fly. I probably would have hit that ball. Just can't get there. Nice job by the guy in black. Nice touch. Yep, just not a good third shot. The guy in blue in the back was caught in the transition zone, and the guy in the light blue did a great job of hitting it at his feet. All right, here comes a third shot drive. Boom. Fifth shot drive. Boom. Oh, that ball was going out, but it didn't matter. Put right down the middle of the court. That is the game. I think the final score was 11-4. to four. The team in the near court just took over this game by changing their strategy. They realized they were not winning at the net. They went to almost an exclusive power game, and they got the job done. So there you have it. A really good job by the winning team switching things up. At the beginning of the game, they got behind by the score of 1-3. to three. They were mostly in a dinking battle with their opponents, and it just was not working for them. So they switched things up, they went to a power game, and they ended up winning the game 11-4. to four. They outscored their opponents 10-1 to one after being behind by the score of 1-3. to three. Do you notice when a particular strategy is not working for you? And if so, what do you do? Do you do like the winning team and change things up, try something different? Or do you continue to do the same thing, hoping that things will get better? I'd really like to know, so please leave a comment in the comment section below. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really do hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, see you on the court and thanks for watching.